Preact Sales Accelerator. This is our base build of Dynamics 365 for sales. It's preloaded with most frequently requested changes from sales teams and it enables your organization to complete a rapid rollout of Dynamics. As well as including additional fields, views and dashboards, we've removed the series of default displays which are rarely used by sales teams to declutter the interface and improve user adoption. What also sets the Accelerator apart from out-of-the-box builds of Dynamics for Sales is the inclusions of all of our packaged solutions. These add more capabilities, fill some gaps in the standard product's functionality and improve, again, the user's end experience. In developing the Sales Accelerator, our aim is to provide the most comprehensive build of Dynamics Sales that simplifies user adoption so organizations can complete the quickest deployment of Dynamics for the lowest upfront cost. Now, if we just click over here, I'll just take you into the actual solution itself. The first thing you'll notice when we look at the solution is the dashboards. Um, it's quite common for users what to want to um, enable dashboards as their welcome screen. They can see an overarching view of you know the, the way the company sits, you know, with their sales forecasts, you know, anything like that. What we've done is we've we've given you a sort of a, a base template of all of the things and the experiences that we've learned along the way. Um, so we've got this sales boilerplate template. It's basically sales over a period of time, via year, via individual owners if we need to. You can see as and when you click into these, it's quite an intuitive report. It will just dive down and, and look at patterns and, and it helps you analyze the data. We've got year on year sales. So again, you know, why are we doing better than we did last year, for example? Can we come down here and drill into this specifically? What are we doing in 2019? Again, you can start spotting patterns with this. Um, again, the filters based on team, based on ownership or different individual units. Lead velocity, similar scenario. We can, we've got filters on years. We've got filters on teams. Um, looking at estimated close versus actual close dates. Qualification rates to opportunities. Um, influences, this is a massive one. When we analyze our data, we can see that typically a repeat customer is 5.25 times more likely to replay, uh, repeat their business with us. You know, one opportunity is more likely to be won based on them being a repeat client. Um, and then the, obviously the sales territories. You know, it's just quite a nice little visual here. You know, who's doing the most sales? They appear as a big fish. A small fish is somebody who's not doing so well in their pipeline. And um, when we look at this, you know, one lost opportunities on a, a heat, sort of a, a map of the UK, we can zoom in and you can see the lost ones are the red and the, and the, the green ones are one. So we can analyze areas and territories of where we're winning deals so this is the preact sales template power bi dashboard that, that we will give you as part of the sales accelerator um, you can see how that varies to a, just a standard out of the box dashboard if i just look at the sales activity dashboard which is just a normal dynamics dashboard you can see the the visuals and and, and things are very different um, you can see we're looking at you know we've only got six elements on here whereas the other one we've got We've got more capabilities and more drill down options than we would have with standard out of the box dashboards. You know, this is typically somebody looking at a pipeline with their activity management. These are all still in here. We haven't removed any of these. One thing we have done is remove some of those out of the box dashboards again that clutter up with views that nobody was using. Um, so hopefully you can see that's a nice added feature to the sales accelerator solution. Um, if we come across here to the accounts, um, it was quite common as well beforehand that we had a load of system views, you know, accounts that I'm um, not worked on, on and things like that in certain periods of time. Again, we've removed some of those views. I um, mean, this is across the board. It's on leads, opportunities, accounts, contacts as well. But we've added a few of our own. So active suppliers, active partners, it's something that crops up a lot. If I click on active partners, this will show me a list of all partners that we're working with. This isn't just people that we've sold to that might be a customer or a client. It might be somebody that we're working with in a partnership. There's none in my list here. If I look at suppliers, it's a similar concept. There's a list of active suppliers, 224 in this view. If I click into one of these, for example, this is driven now by a couple of the extra fields we've added to the form. So you can see, is this a partner? Yes or no. The fact that we've got this set to yes being a supplier, it's feeding our suppliers view. Um, We've removed some of the fields on here as well that were redundant, sick codes and things like that. We've tidied up the form so it's, it's more relevant to what you guys basically need and use and have been asking for. Um, again, same same concept on contacts. 
Um, but if I just click over here now and, and show you a few things we've done on the lead process as well. So we've just made a few changes to the leads. So we'll just go into here and I'll just pick one of these leads. You can see we've basically streamlined the process flow across the top. So we've got a bit of a sales process flow across here. We've got one stage for the lead and then a few stages when we qualify this to an opportunity. We've also made a few additional changes to the form itself. So it was quite apparent in the past the out of the box solution you are having to fill in you know, all of your contacts information um, against the lead even if there was already an existing contact in the database so we've just enabled this by adding a few extra fields in is the contact existing yes or no if you say no then it, it forces your hand to fill in some of these fields if you say yes then it hides these fields so you haven't got to worry about duplication of data it then shows you this lookup field, which will look up your existing contacts that are already in your database. The same thing applies for accounts. You know, is this an existing account? If you say yes, then which account is it? You need to go and specify. If you say no, it shows you all the additional fields. So in this scenario, we've got Jones Recruitment here, their industry sector, which we've made a few changes to and added all of the variations that we believe will be in there as well. Um, and one of our other sections of our IP solution is our address lookup feature. So we've got a you know an address field here. Um, if we just start typing in a value, I don't know, um, something like that, just an address, you can see there's 10 addresses in this area. We click into this and then it will show me all of the, the values if I just pick one of these. Then pre-populates the address information that we've got and you can see it appears on a map. So it's just keeping the data nice and clean uh, before we qualify this to become an opportunity, uh, an account and a contact and an opportunity. As I said before, if I say no to that, effectively the analysis is going to create Lauren Jones um, and all the other details against that organization. Really useful if you've got uh, a new individual that you might have met at an event, for example, but it's linked to an existing organization. You don't have to fill in all the company details down here. Um, let me just give her a name quickly. There you go, something like that and save that. Um, and then we can move this across into the sale. So we can just qualify this, put it across into the develop option. It's now going to go away and it's going to go and create that account and that contact. Any duplicates that are already in the system, it will flag. You can do ignore and save, or you can specify one of these if you need to. I'm just going to click ignore and save. It will then say the lead is successfully qualified. And you can see it's now created that account for us. It's created that contact link to it. It's now created us a new opportunity called requires CRM training. We're at the develop stage. Um, for those familiar already with Dynamics, you can see the timeline here. This is where we can then log all of our activities. Um, phone calls, emails and appointments. Um, just to show you, we've, we, part of the sales XR is we turn on the integration with your Outlook. So over here, if I have an email that's coming from, say, Lauren, let me just quickly fill with this. There we go. We've got an email from Lauren. You can see over here on the right hand side, it will automatically look for the email address. It will then tell us actually, you know, this person is existing in the system and we can see Jones Limited. There's Lauren. But of course, then at this point, we can say, actually, this is to do with that opportunity. We can search for it or we can pick something that's recent. If I click require CRM training here like this, it will now copy this email from our inbox and it will track this regarding this opportunity, which then from Outlook, you can see by clicking on here. If we come back across here and just give this a little refresh like this, you can then see there's that email against that opportunity. So we turn that on for you as well. Um, we then progress through most of this situation, you know, this, the, the, the questions you'd be asking in here if you identify stakeholders and competitors and you'll be adding those in down here. And then of course, if we get to quote stage, you might want to generate a quote as well. So we can click a new quote here like this. And then once this gets generated, we will have a new quote reference ID, which, you know, we can use and reference in, in anything that we're sending out if we need to. Um, we've got a link to the opportunity we've got a link to the company so that we can see this from the company record as well if we need to um, we've got shipping methods and a whole load of other fields down here as well and any specific prices that you might be selling in um, but when we click add product here like this um, we didn't add these to the opportunity which you can do um, it gives you the ability to add existing products from your catalog or you can add in a, a write-in which is just an ad hoc product for a one-off thing that you might be selling like postage and packaging or something um, but if we just pick something in here from our catalog, we've got a day's training. There's one of those at that price, for example, click save and close. It just helps when we send this out, you know, we submit this to the client that they can then see a few line items on this on this if we need to. Um, and then once we're happy and we're ready to submit this, we can just activate the quote up here. 
Um, and then part of what we've actually added is, from our IP catalog is an integration with DocuSign. So based on that, we've got this nice little Get Signature button here. Um, once you're ready to submit this to the client, all you need to do is click Get Signature. And then you can see it will ask you for which template you want to use. And we can show you how you can build these templates yourself as well. But we've just added a few um, in here. So DocuSign Quote Template, for example. I just do that and I click Send. What you will then see, this will then go off and it will go to DocuSign, send it out on your behalf and submit this to the client. What you'll then see also on the quote, once it actually finishes sending, there we go. If I click on the details tab here, you can see anyone now looking at this, you know, if it's one of your colleagues looking to see what, where are we at with that quote, for example, they can see obviously then, you know, we've submitted something here and they can click into the document here and see what that looks like. Now, if I just flick over to what it would look like from a client's end, let me just click over here into my Gmail. See, it'd be a nice email coming in from whoever you're sending it from, you know, whatever user you're deciding to send it from. The, the client can click review document like so. And this will then pull up, you know, the templated document that you guys have set up in your system. And this is what they would see if I just click continue on here. And you can see there's that day's training. It's a letter headed template. We've got the quote reference ID, the person who's issued it and anything else. The client can then just come in here adopt to sign this, you know, like that, or they can draw their own signature if they need to or upload something. But effectively they can adopt and sign this or they can click up here and just finish it later if they need to but effectively there's a signature on that they get to then finish that what that will then in turn do is you know let's just say no we don't want to see the rest of that perfect if we go back to crm now and we just give this a refresh what you will then see on the details tab is an additional one here that now says signed document. You can see this is, uh, you know, DocuSign history gets created and it's basically signed. So if you wanted to click into that, you'd then be able to actually see the physical signature as a PDF. You know, there's the client signature that's come back in. So it, it feeds back into the database. Um, but then if we click over here, we've got this DocuSign's history. So, you know, before I submitted it, this status would have said submitted. So anyone can look at it and go, okay, what status are we at? And once it gets signed, it comes back in as a completed document, basically. Um, so that's pretty much the sales process, you know, the way that goes through. And you can tailor make those, those templated things that we submit to clients if you need to, as much as you need to. Um, we give you the basis for that, but you can put whatever information you need to on those. Um, that's pretty much the end of the sales process. Obviously, you can revise these quotes if you need to, but you know, if you're happy with that, then you can close the quote or go to order and it will just create an order over here if you need it. Um, a couple of other things that we've then got on our in our IP catalog, um, a few add-ons. So I'll just show you a few of those now. I'll just click over here on the accounts. And if I just go to, um, let me just go to one of these accounts that I use. Just click into the account here. What you can see is we've obviously enabled this or I've just put this on this little add in section, but that's just because, you know, most people want these in different areas of the system. Um, a couple of our IP bits that we've got is we've got this next and last activities. It's a way of you seeing what was the last email you had, what was the last appointment, the last phone call, who is it with, you know, at your organization and what was the context of that? What is the next up and coming activities that you might have? So we can see that there's an up and coming appointment with my colleague Fiona. Um, that's due to take place on you know, a couple of weeks time at 11 o'clock. Um, it's telling you the last times and dates of the activities, the phone calls, the task emails and, and the physical last time and date of something that's happened. Um, we've got this one here. This is a multi line of text field. So as, an, as you start typing, you can see the, the characters is going to count. It's going to tell you how many you've got left to fill in in here. We've got a very similar thing here. You know, I've limited this one to 11 characters. This might be a mobile number, for example, and it will tell you how many you've got remaining. If you go over that, it will stop you adding any more than you need to. We've got this multi lookup. This is really useful if you're on, say, um, a, a project and you've got a project entity in and you want to add in project managers, your end. You know, we've only got one owner field, but it's really useful to have additional, you know, staff your end that are working on something or own something whether that's territory managers, project managers, you name it, we can add that in there. We've also then got a tagging solution. So we've got something in here, you can see as soon as you click into it, it will then say, okay, you know, these are tags that we've predefined in the system. We've got a few security roles around this, so not everybody can create these, only certain people can. If I want to say, actually, do you know, I need to tag this record as a VIP, for example, I can just pick the VIP, it's now tagged. You could then run a query and say, show me all records that have been tagged with this value. 
if you've got the right permissions and it doesn't exist you could um, type in another you know tag if I say um, hedge fund 1000 because it's a new hedge fund we're creating and I want to tag all of new opportunities with this value for example then it can create it here and then we just pick it and now this you know based on my permissions is now added to the system for somebody else to pick as a suggested tag moving forward um, we've got an auto number in system so if I, upon saving of a record this could fill in with a unique value number that you guys can preset pre the suffix the prefix everything else we've got bank validation if you put in a bank account number and things like that in here and click validate it will then pull back all the information it will tell you where in the world that bank is whether they can accept direct debits and where the branch is and things like that and as we saw before we've got the address lookup as well so all of these nice additional add-ons you know bits of IP you, you automatically get um, the sales accelerator is available as part of Preax Money Service at no additional cost. This includes all of these things that you just saw in the catalogue, as well as support, consultancy, training, and our e learning resources through our training portal as well. Um, if you're happy with what you've seen today, please feel free to get in touch to discuss your requirements further and how the sales accelerator will enable your business to quickly roll out Dynamics 365 for sales.